Most of the time, given a budget constraint, a consumer will choose a bundle of goods on the budget constraint and at a point of tangency between an indifference curve and that budget constraint. However, there are exceptions to this. What these exceptions depend upon are preferences. Convexity of preferences drives everything here. In this video, I'll talk about the exception of perfect complements. With perfect complement goods, the optimal bundle is going to be on the budget line and at the right angle or the vertex of an indifference curve. Here we have two complements, pie and ice cream. And for this consumer, these two goods must be consumed in a fixed proportion. For every additional slice of pie, this consumer needs one scoop of ice cream to go with it. If you give her another scoop of ice cream, but it doesn't come with one additional slice of pie, she's no better or worse off. In the case of perfect complements, we don't have a true tangency. Now, I mean, it looks like the indifference curve is just touching the budget line like a tangency is, but the key difference here is that at the right angle of this L-shaped indifference curve, the MRS is undefined. Remember, the min function that describes perfect complement goods for utility is not differentiable. So the marginal rate of substitution is not defined, and so we don't have a true tangency. What this means is we can't use the usual math. There's a different way of finding the optimal bundle. So let's learn this by example. Let's say in our example, an individual's preferences are represented by u equals the min of 2x comma y. What this min function means is that for every additional x that the consumer gets, she needs exactly two y's to go with it. So if she has one x, she needs two y's. If she has two x's, she'll need four y's. If she has three x's, she'll need six y's. For every one x, she requires two y's to go with it. The problem tells, that, tells us that income is $20, the price of x is 12, and the price of y is 4, and we need to determine the optimal bundle. Well, here's a graphical depiction of the consumer's budget line. When she only buys y, she can afford 20 divided by 4 units or 5 units. When she only buys x, she can afford 20 divided by 12 or 5 thirds unit. Because her preferences are perfect complements, her indifference curves are L-shaped, and we're looking for this point where the vertex of some indifference curve hits the budget constraint. Because we're going to be at the vertex, we know that at the optimal bundle, y will equal 2x. And we really get that from just very simply putting what's on one side of the comma equal to what's on the other side of the comma. So here, 2x equals y. Now in the Lagrangian method video, I show you how most of the time we arrive at this equation for y in terms of x by doing a lot of math. Good news, in the case of perfect complements, we don't have to do a lot of math. We literally just have to set what's on one side of the comma in the min function equal to what's on the other side. And what we get from that is our first equation in two unknowns. From the Lagrangian methods video, remember that we need a second equation with the same two unknowns. And just like in that video, here the second equation is the budget constraint. So I'm going to take the budget constraint and where there's a y, plug in that y is 2x. And in doing that, solve for x. Here x is 1. And since y has to be double x, y is 2. And that is how you solve for the utility maximizing bundle in the case of perfect complement goods.